Okay, I guess I'll slowly get started because we're already five minutes behind and uh, people keep coming in, but uh, yeah, I have 80 slides and I'm a bit freaking out, so uh, <laughs> it's 40 minutes, it looks short, so um, yeah, I'll slowly start and um, I hope that people that get in are quiet. Uh, so hi everyone, um, I hope you're all good. I hope those in the back will see something. Uh, can't promise much, but uh, like the, there's nobody from here that could turn these lights off, I guess. No, it's like, yeah. Okay, uh, whatever. So, I'm Jordi Bogiano, and um, I've been doing uh, open source stuff for a while, uh, composer mostly, symphony as well before that. Uh, and at the moment, I'm doing uh, some freelancing and consulting uh, in case you're interested. Just get in touch. Um, so first of all, I just want to introduce a bit why I'm doing this talk or why I thought this, this would be a good idea. Um, so there's lots of talk about best practices, like usually at conferences, you know, you have like solid and TDD and BDD and DDD and whatever it is. And, uh, testing stuff, these object calisthenics, you may have heard of that, it's very interesting. Um, dependency injection, uh, 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 it goes on and on and on. And it's, uh, it's like, it, it, you know, that's what we hear all the time. And it's, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just, to me, not the whole thing. Like, th there is something missing. And, um, and like as I guess as engineers, we tend to focus on you know on the code side, and um, because yeah, like who is a developer here? Can I get like okay? Who isn't a developer? Maybe yeah, that would be the smart question for lazy people. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, so yeah, pretty much everyone. So who is paid to actually type on the keyboard? Like, can I get some courageous hands? Like. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I think that's what people think sometimes, but I think, you know, this actually the job is to solve problems and not, um, not just like being there typing and being a code monkey. So, I just would like to put some perspective on this whole um, like best practices. There's the best practices for the code. Yes, it's important. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm really not like trying to denigrate any of the other very important talks, but I just you know, would like to put it in perspective with the rest. Um, so yeah, that was my goal is to kind of sound like a fortune cookie uh, for an hour. And then I saw that on the schedule it's 40 minutes. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, so that's the first point, uh, and it has nothing to do with the rhino, but uh, I put some cute animals in there because it's my first like non-technical talk, so I thought I can actually use cute animals for once. Uh, and also I thought I would balance a bit with all the ranting that's coming, so it's, you know, if you feel a bit sad and depressed by all I say, just look at the cute animals and uh, hopefully it will lift the spirits. Uh, so the first point is reflect. Uh, reflect is to, th to think seriously and ponder or consider. So um, that's my first tip is to actually use your brain. Uh, it may sound silly, but uh, yeah, I hope I have a point. Um, yeah, first of all, like adaptability and mostly adaptability of humans. Um, so like what, I don't know what you see there. Um, like an igloo, yeah, that's the very factual answer. Um, to me, it's like, yeah, that's, it's like this wonderful adaptability of humans that, you know, we need to survive in, in shit conditions. I mean, this, this doesn't look very fun to me. Uh, like all the Spanish people in the room might agree that this, this looks pretty scary. Um, and so yeah, this is survival. This is another type of survival. And you know, humans just adapt and that's, Cool. Like that's that's brilliant. I think we manage to live everywhere. Um, nowadays we also have this. Like it's not necessarily fun, but yeah, we you know, 
just gotta get the job done, so some people have to suffer through that, apparently. It's, it's a choice, somehow. Um, <clears throat> and then we have this kind of stuff, uh, and, and this to me is like, it's the bad side of, of this human adaptability that, you know, sometimes we have these dialogues that ask like, do you want this, blah, 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 like just boring text, and like, yes, no. And then there's a checkbox saying like, never ask me again. And people tend to just like click no every day. Like they, I see people do that all the time. It's just every morning they come, they start the machine, they start their editor, and it has like five pop-ups, and they go like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and when I see that, it drives me completely nuts. Like I just, <laughs> I don't get it that you, you know, that somehow, yeah, people adjust to this stuff that sucks. And instead of once reading the thing, saying, okay, never ask again, done, and that's it. Like in, every morning you just save five seconds and like some, some what the hell moment of going like, no, no, no. I mean, on the other side, this is also a pretty badly designed thing with like way too many options, but that's, that wasn't my point. Um, so yeah, please, like, just. Um, similarly, with editors, I find also when I, when I work together with people like pair programming or something, I, usually there are some things that people do that tend to also like annoy me a bit. I mean, I'm sure that happens to most people and probably if someone else would watch me do the things I do, they would also go nuts, right? It's not, uh, I'm not saying like I'm amazing, but it's, uh, like, I think it's interesting when you notice, when you look at someone doing things, you notice they might not do it in the most efficient way. And like, this is an example of, um, I don't know if you see very well in the back, but it's like those multi multiple cursors you have in Sublime Text, and I guess nowadays in PHP Storm as well, and uh, maybe VI has some plugin, and uh, I don't know. Like, uh, so this multiple cursor stuff can really help you do, do like amazing things if, you, if you're used to it and if you think about it a bit. And um, yeah, I'd just like to point out this stuff, like what, what I want to say is really this, like when something is broken, you don't just go like, oh yeah, I'll fix it next time, you know, it's, it's annoying, but oh yeah, next time, and every morning, no, 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 and <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So I think it's important to really learn to, 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 to feel like, when something is, is broken, you have, I mean, maybe you don't, but it's maybe something to learn. I do have this feeling, usually I'm like, this just makes me a bit angry inside, and then, it, you know, either you go, okay, I'll do it next time, or you act on it now. And acting on it now usually is the best way to just get rid of problems and not have at the end a mountain of problems. Um, so yeah. There's, there's two parts to this, like once, I mean, I guess this applies to life in general, but as it's a developer conference, I'll try to stay on topic. And um, like when designing software, it's a big thing because obviously you're like, you're creating problems not only for yourself with maintenance, but you're creating problems for your users. So just everything you do actually impacts someone at some point. And, um, and also, when you, when you use something, like, I think it's important to say, okay, I'm using this library, and I realize it sucks in some way. Like, it's just something is not optimal. Uh, just report it. Like, don't, you know, don't go like, ah, I'll hack around, and then, you know, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine in this project, but next project, same thing. You're going to have to hack around again, and again, and again. And the reporting issues, it's also something that I, I don't know why some people don't do it at all. Like, who reports issues like every single time when they, they hit something? That's like two hands, really. Like, I don't know if you're lazy or scared. I mean, it's not going to bash you. It's actually a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you really should do more of that than if you don't, because um, like the, the, yeah, I had this plug about the DX talk that follows me, right? Ryan is going to talk about this developer experience and to me this goes in the same direction. It's if we don't know what sucks, we can't fix it. 
Am I the only one hearing echo like crazy? Yeah. I feel like I'm in the space station, like Houston, Houston. Uh, okay. Is this on maybe? No, that's worse. Okay. Sorry, you have the echo as well? Yeah, well, whatever. Keep going. Um, it's highly disturbing, actually. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, the second big point I like to to to, to insist on with uh, using your brain is asking why. Um, so, not really like this because I think like not like just going ah why is this so shit and like this. It's not quite uh, helpful. It's more like this you know smart code monkey going like. Yeah, why is this the way it is and trying to understand and maybe trying to find a solution then reporting an issue or something like it, or just understanding the things and uh, there's this good like quote tweet quote uh, by, by Marco Tabini which is like uh, saying that a developer asking you why is just doing her job like this is what we should do really it's like we have to understand things before we can solve them you just start like, like, no, you're just building a solution without the problem. It doesn't make sense. So, so asking why in that sense is, is really like it's really important. Uh, and why can be um, like about business as well, right? It's not just why would I do it this way in the code. It's more like why do I need to do this at all? Because, like, I guess most of you work for some company that has a product or something, and you have, or you build products for other companies, whatever. But it's, you know, usually we get paid for doing stuff that has value. Otherwise, people don't pay for it. Um, so to build value, you have to actually solve something, like solve a problem for someone. So you have to understand this. Like, it, it's it's quite critical that you just. First, understand it, and if you don't, ask again why, and why is this that way, and why should I care? And sometimes it's just because your boss is an asshole. That happens, I guess. That, you know, but or oh, some investor wants this or whatever. Like sometimes it's bad reasons, and then it's a problem because, like uh, Anthony said there, like do they actually believe the, the reason? Like believe in the reason. Like, if you if you can't believe what you're doing. It, it's hard to be good at it, or it's hard to stay motivated. So I think, uh, yeah, in those cases where the boss just wants it and there is no articulable reason, yeah, sucks, but it happens. But on the other hand, like just in most cases, I guess there is an actual reason, and understanding it is a good thing. So do ask and do tell as well. Um, Telling why, I guess that's mostly about code for us. Um, it's like in comments, there is uh, actually if you like, since I read this, it, it really, I think it's a really in interesting comment. And like since I saw this, I, when I look at code and when I look at comments, I read them in a different way and I really wonder, okay, like is this, is this telling me what it's doing or is this telling me why it's doing it? And there, I'm sure those at the back have no chance. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is like doing a string replace of a, a space into nothing, and the comment is like, collapse all spaces. So yes, I mean, that's indeed what it's doing. Uh, but like, does the comment have value? Like, does it add something? Or is it just more like noise when you're reading the code? It's, you know, it, it's really not. Um, not meaningful. Um, yeah. On the other hand, these examples are a bit more, um, I think, a bit better. Um, like the, maybe the second one, I'll read it just for those in the back. Um, it's, I think it's from PHP Unit, and it, it calls some rewind on, the, on an iterator, and it's saying like manually rewinding this variable um, because iterator count moves the pointer forward. And so, yeah, that's something that if you read the code, it might not be obvious 
you know, why you're doing this, because if you don't know that iterator count does this thing, which is like kind of, you know, it's low level iterator stuff, you, you might not realize, so I think this, this has some value. And yeah, like, as, as I mentioned before, like in the, in the what example, if you, if you describe what the code does, you're just, you know, duplicating the meaning in a way, like, the code is, is the what, already, so if you have readable code, it's awesome, you have a good what, but you still don't really explain why in some cases, so I think it, there's still a case for, for proper comments there. Um, and that's a point actually added in by, um, by Frank, who is speaking in the other room, and like, he was sad not to see my talk, so I sent him the slides before, and like, he gave me some feedback. Um, and he, he said like he knows some people doing weekly code burns and so they like every week they sit together and just someone shows the code they, they worked on and explains actually why they did it this way. And I think that's a good way to also like reflect on your own code to, to understand like why you actually did it in, in a certain way. And then to explain others and so that, I mean, it's a good way of learning by, by explaining this, uh, the, the reasoning behind things. All right, cute animals, and I'll drink. So those are giraffes. Uh, <laughs> so empathy, um, <clears throat> empathy, like who knows the word empathy? Surely a lot, huh? Um, but who thinks they really know this? Like, I, I don't know, I feel like it's something that's being thrown around, but. I can, unless you kind of think about it, it's one of those words that's a bit complicated, but not really, so you use it, but it's like, eh, doesn't matter what it means. Um, so it's actually like to understand and share the feelings of another. Um, and this is very important, I think, in many, many ways. Like, there is the, the design problem of, like, in this case, you know, the. It's a real world example, but it, it applies to code as well, I think. Uh, like they built some barricade that's completely stupid, so nobody wants to walk through it, so they just walk on the side. And you see this like if, this, you know, if you actually imagine the person going through the barricade while building it, you probably wouldn't build it that way, or like, especially if there is no barricade around to stop people from taking the shorter path, like. So, this is like what I would say empathy towards user is like as a developer or as someone building something is thinking of who follows and who will actually use this stuff and trying to like there's this common way of describing empathy as putting yourself in someone's shoes which is a good metaphor but it's maybe hard to understand as well like what it means. I'll get to that in a moment but um, but yeah, I already said that before, like the, the really users of the software or developers when you're building anything, because like developers can be, you know, if you build a library, the developers are going to be the users of that library. If you build anything at all, actually, the user is going to be maybe you tomorrow or you in a week and you don't know what the hell you did anymore. And I mean, that's, you know, it's a common problem, but um, like, thinking about others while you're doing something probably helps to make it better. And like here's like just one example for, from like it's maybe a bad example, but, but it's something I, I see a lot and even in my own code, right? I'm not bashing anyone here, I'm just, I just see this as a problem that if you have like a huge constructor with you know, 20 arguments and they're all like true, false, blah, 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 and then, <coughs> sorry when you actually, like, if you think of the person is, that's going to use this code, and uh, you look at it from the user perspective, like, if you actually type this out, and you, then you maybe realize the problem that you have no idea what true, true, true means. Like, it just doesn't make sense at all. And so, like, yeah, if, I think it's maybe a good way of, of visualizing it for code, but, but I think it's mostly important in, uh, 
in like UI design or something like that where you actually have to interface with people and yeah, people are very different. And it's not just like nerds versus the others, I think. It's like even within us here, there's probably a ton of differences. So trying to think of all the use cases and saying, okay, like maybe someone that actually comes here will not care about this button and this like 10 item drop down I had I put there where you're forced to select one. Like, you know, can we rethink this maybe? I don't know. Like it's just keeping that in mind, I think is very important. And something that I don't see many people doing and it makes me sad every time. Um, then there's empathy towards your team, and that's more about like in a direct human level of you know communicating with others more than it's, it's not really like thinking about them when building things, but but um, like yeah, when when communicating. And uh, I mean, this, you know, they say that I don't know if it's true, but I I guess I could believe this um, that showing empathy towards someone makes them more like more open and less defensive. So, because you, you come at them saying, look, I understand your problem, you know, I, I, I know this is bad, we messed up, whatever. You know, but now let's discuss and try to find a way. It's better than, okay, now nah, you're wrong. Like, and I hate you and like, you can't have a conversation like that, right? So, it's, yeah, it makes for more, more positive discussions or less negative ones, if, like, depending on the glass, how full or half empty. Um, but so I think it's really important. And I, it's difficult to find resources, like good stuff on how to actually build empathy or like how to train yourself in that. I read a few like long ass posts and I tried to, <laughs> to boil it down to like, you know, a few bullet points that are magical and uh, that you can go away with. Um, <clears throat> one, like the, the main thing really is, like the first step is shut up and listen. Like that's saying, well, first of all, like not, you know, shutting up is not equal to waiting to speak or waiting to answer because like this one is really actively listening and silence and understanding the person, etc. And the other one is more like, okay, I'm gonna say this, but I'm gonna say this, but and then is it my turn? Yeah, then poof. And that's, <laughs> it's not good, like, because you're not even focused on understanding the person if you do that. So. Uh, then asking if something is not clear is very important as well, and that's also something that's hard because you have to really think, okay, did I completely, completely understand this? Yes, no, and then if you want to go further as an exercise maybe, or even I think in business meetings it's very important, is to repeating the, the stuff, like saying, okay, so the way I understand it is this. Was that right? And that's, that's the point where you realize, okay, like the other person is like, no, that was completely wrong. And if you do it at the business meeting, it's a lot better than, you know, six months later when you're done with the product and they go like, eh? This is not what we paid for, and like, yeah, they have problems. Um, then the like next levels are a bit, bit more uh, long term, maybe. Um, it's like just caring about people, asking them how they are, etc., and actually listening to the answers, um, and, and not asking in a way of like you're going to judge them or give advice to their sad life. It's, it's you know. It's not about that, it's really just about building understanding for that person's perspective. And talking to people is the best way to do that because by looking at someone you can imagine a bit how they feel, how they behave in life, but like actually asking them is probably better. Um, so that way you can understand them and once you have this understanding you can actually try this trick of like complaining from their side. So, it's like if you, even if you're in an argument with someone, you can kind of imagine, okay, I know how they, you know, how they behave, how they work. So I can imagine that from their side, I'm an asshole in this case. Like it's, you know, then once you are at that point, you can much better say, okay, like I messed up. Let's just, you know, let's move on in a healthy way instead of just colliding. 
All right, third point, and I think I have to hurry up like crazy because I have 10 minutes left. Uh, so the third point is chill. Um, so if you're experiencing like stress, exhaustion, lack of motivation, or interpersonal problems, those are all signs that you may be burning out. Um, so that's a problem, I think, that many people experience in this industry. Uh, I know, like, for me, like, this summer was just, like, I was done with, like, work and everything. I just completely checked out. Um, and it was good. Like, it, it was really a, a good experience to do absolutely nothing for a while. Mm. <clears throat> um, somewhat related, there's a good talk about, like, mental illness, which is, you may say it's related or not to burnout, but uh, I mean, burnout is just a sort of temporary mental illness, I guess. Uh, if you want to check the talk, it's, it's quite good. Um, it's, yeah, just putting it out there. It's in the slide later. Um, and then this, uh, this, this writer, Quinn Norton, wrote uh, a blog post about, like, I think it was called about productivity, uh, against productivity. Um, and in that she, I mean, it's, it's about writing and not about code at all, but I think it, it was interesting still. Uh, she says that like the, the, the most, you know, the brightest things in, in, in her work came out of, of these moments of doing nothing that she had. And because she took like a year or a few years to do absolutely nothing somewhere in some Costa Rica or somewhere. Um, <coughs> And this is like, this was a bit, uh, yeah, like my summer doing absolutely nothing. There was also like just, yeah, okay, let's go to the beach and like just do nothing and no, no GitHub emails, no whatever. <laughs> like, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's healthy and also that's, you know, like for example, for speaking for me, uh, I've been doing composer talks for the last few years and I'm so sick of it. Like everyone just wants to, to hear about composer from me. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's just, and it's, for me it's also difficult to find another topic to talk about because I I'm, I'm spend so much time on that that it's the only thing I have in my head. So taking time off actually allowed me to like have a few more talk ideas like this one and just going, uh, yeah, a bit out of the, out of my loop in my head. Um, <clears throat> the other thing she said is like that we should all just spend more time uh, while like looking quizzically at birds we don't recognize. So if you want to do that for 30 seconds, there's a weird one. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a good it's a good point as well that you really so, like you know currently the, the like this whole society is based on like just input in your face non-stop, like between ads and Twitter and whatever, like notifications everywhere, it's just non-stop input. And actually like just sitting on a bench and doing absolutely nothing, sometimes it's, it's a good thing. And um, yeah, I, I would recommend like, you know, printing signs like that and just gluing them some random places like in the toilets or something like that. I don't know who, who reads or writes tweet on, on the toilet, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure like a third of the Twitter feed is made on the toilet somehow because it's just people bored and they go like, yeah, okay. So I think if you would use these five minutes, you know, to <laughs> just focus on yourself a bit, just to go anywhere, uh, it's, it's probably a good idea. Um, okay, fourth point is being pragmatic. Uh, so pragmatism is the, the pursuit of practicality over aesthetic qualities. Um, and it's also a big buzzword that we use in random places, but we don't think about it really. Um, and again, uh, a thing from Anthony Ferrara, because he's quite smart, and so I just steal everything from him in my slides. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he made this chart which uh, basically puts like clean code and dirty code on, on one axis, and good business value, poor business value on the other one. And so it goes from like the, the clean code with business value is excellent, the dirty code with business value is good code because it actually does something. The one with poor business value, even if it's clean, it's still bad code because it's useless. And the dirty one with 
no business value, that's really garbage. You're like, there's just no hope for that one. But I think it's, it's interesting to put it like this because it kind of changes the, the perspective from, oh, okay, we need clean code at all costs. No, first of all, we need code that works. Like, just <laughs> we need something that works. Because if it doesn't, like, what are you doing with your life? Like, it's just, it's just letters in a file. And if it's useless, uh, what's the point? I mean, it could be like, you know, code as art or whatever, that's fine, like that's still a purpose. But if you're in a business setting and you're doing stuff that's useless, I don't know what you're doing there. Um, and yeah, I would argue that adaptability is actually more important than, than beauty or like, you know, um, like beautiful abstractions like this. Uh, I don't think anyone really cares in the management if you build beautiful abstractions. Like, I mean, they don't pay for this. So I'm not saying it's useless. Again, there are definite use cases for that. And it's, if it makes sense to use a, you know, amazing abstraction because it's gonna help you refactor or whatever, then yes, sure, do it. But don't do it just because it's a beautiful abstraction. Like, if it makes sense for the refactoring, that's a business value. Like. You know, it's not about beauty. I have an example which really amazed me. Like, one day I got this pull request and I just, I was like, what the fuck happened here? Like, that, that was, it's, it stayed in my brain because it, it was really, um, it's, it's a CSV export thing. Um, there is a formatter interface and a bunch of other stuff, and that's the CSV implementation of the formatter interface. And it does implement like this, so that's the first part, and that's the second part, and that's the last part. Um, so it's a lot of lines. And actually, somewhere in there, it just does like escaping for CSV, etc. So like that's, you know, it was nice, there was an interface, there was a blah, 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 adapter, and like, but this does the same, like, <laughs> seriously, it's a loop with fput CSV, like, that's all you need to write to a CSV file. So, like, and you know, two years later, we're still only doing CSV exports. So, sure, we have three lines that are, like, not pluggable, adaptable, whatever, like, boom, 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 design patterns, but, but those three lines, like, did they need something else than the CSV, which so far didn't happen, just, <laughs> Whatever, we'll move them somewhere else. Like, it's, it's okay, you know? This is adaptable, like moving this somewhere else will not cost you days. So, uh, no point of uh, going, going nuts with this. Um, yeah, I think really, like, it's, this is premature, like, premature architecting, I would call it, like, it, you know, to go in the whole premature optimization is the root of all evil. Like, this is the same principle. It's just saying, okay, like, you, d you don't need it now, and it doesn't really give you more adaptability. Just don't do it. Uh, another point about pragmatism is, like, you know, tabs, yeah, and this kind of flame war. I mean, it's not about tabs at all, but it's just, like, pedantry in terms of, of coding standards and, and whatnot, like, just endless arguments about useless things, really. Just, just focus on your job, like, it, you know, it's fine. Um, that was just a quick hand. Uh, <laughs> then, uh, if, if we take all of that and we look at, okay, how to review code, we should first look at the, the purpose of the code. Like, is it, is it doing something valuable at all? And secondly, is it actually doing what it should, or is it broken? Maybe looking at adaptability as well, I, I think it's very important that you don't corner yourself into a bad situation, that's for sure. And then uh, the visually appealing or like the beauty of the code to me is, is last in, in these four. I'm sure there's a lot of more stuff that doesn't matter below, but um, yeah. And uh, yeah, if you have bad looking code, I would argue just use this PHP CS Fixer tool. It's quite amazing. Like I would. If I had more time, I would run for 10 minutes about PHP CS, because I really don't like it, but, but PHP CS Fixer, I think, is like the, the best thing since then. Um, 
but yeah, I just check it out if you don't know it. It's just reformat your code to follow standards instead of telling you you're wrong and this is bad. So I think it's, it's a better use of computer time to fix things than yell at people. Um, <clears throat> this is maybe relevant here. I don't know who only uses Symfony for everything and that's it. Like, yeah, you're just, you don't want to raise your hands anymore, okay. Uh, I mean, I mostly do, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. I'll raise my hand. But uh, I think it shouldn't be like, while I use it because I'm comfortable with it, and for most things it actually works, um, I don't think you should use one tool or follow this like doctrine of this is the best tool and that's it. And especially you shouldn't push it on others, I think, because other people might have different requirements and, and they might have different knowledge as well. And sometimes it's better to go with the shitty code that you know well than the fancy code that you don't know at all and you're gonna have to, to learn it all. So I think um, you, like, as, as a business thinking developer, like, you should kind of think about all this stuff and, and do a risk analysis and say, okay, like, if we use this, it's gonna be fun, but maybe we blow up the entire project. So if the project is tiny, maybe it's okay. Like, we just, you know, we lost a week, whatever. If it's a huge thing, then maybe be a bit more um, conservative and use something you know already or that's, that's known to work well. Um, and finally, making trade-offs. Um, I think it's like this, this, yeah, a bit too much talk of like these absolutes of this is the way you should do it. Oh no, this is actually the way. And usually you have to, you know, kind of look somewhere in between. And I mean, this is mostly about um, about organizations, but. It applies to code as well, right? You have always trade-offs between like CPU usage or memory. Like you know, if you cache stuff, it's gonna be faster, but you use memory space, etc. Like it, it's always about trade-offs, and, and I think uh, yeah, you should really be careful of people going like, okay, this is magic, and it will solve all your problems all the time. That this just doesn't exist. Um, yeah, another point is in that in that regard is to, you know, like we tend to be a bit binary people with the whole uh, programming thing going on in our heads, but like most situations actually have more than just uh, true or false. So uh, probably like it depends, and like yeah, in, in most cases I think you should just think of it a bit and look. Okay, where are we between the true and the false? And like. This is probably somewhere in between there. And uh, yeah, like I think, yeah, nothing is perfect. I definitely think that, uh, but it doesn't mean that everything is good either. Like some options are bad, some options are better. There's probably none that's perfect, but it doesn't mean you can use anything and it's all the same. So to sum up quickly. Um, yeah, I think you should think. Uh, think about the why of things. Uh, just you know, think about what you do. Think about what you're gonna do to the users. Uh, all of that. Uh, you should try empathy, really. Like uh, train a bit, or like maybe you can do this in pairs. Or I don't know. We can go a kumbaya workshop over there outside if later if you like. Uh, <laughs> I'll just Google for some articles, and if you want to know more, it's uh, it's not hard to find. Uh, be humble and pragmatic, just like, again, like, just don't push yourself on others and just, like, try to, to think about, yeah, what, what matters and not what people say matters, because sometimes they're wrong. And take all absolutes with some perspective. And, yeah, well, finally, just sometimes go chill, uh, especially on the toilet. Uh, so. Thank you very much. So I don't know exactly how much I ran out. Like, I think I'm more or less on time, given I started it. But um, if you have any question, feel free. Yes? 
No, it's called really PHP CS Fixer. Okay. So you can find the slides there. It's a link, like. But if you Google for it, it's. Don't look at me like I'm very late and I have to get out now. Okay, just one more thing, really. Uh, please, the joined in link. Uh, it's broken because she didn't do it on time. <laughs> okay, so go. Go find the, the conference, and like, I would really appreciate if, if I get some feedback for this talk, because like, as I said, it's scary because it was my first non-technical talk. I hope I didn't blow it. And um, yeah, if I can get feedback, that would be awesome. There's lots of people in the room, so surely I can get like 10 commands with meaningful feedback. Thank you.